Brandon gives a hushing gesture as he walks away from a poster for A Quiet Place Day One into the auditorium playing the film. At the bottom of the screen, captions read the following. A Quiet Place Day One is the new third installment in the A Quiet Place franchise. This time it is A Quiet Place Takes Manhattan. Welcome back to Movie Health Community, the internet's number one source of health warnings at the movies. We'll get to a review of A Quiet Place Day One in just a minute. But before we do, let's talk about if it's safe for photosensitive audiences. The answer is... Not exactly. Most of the flashes that are in this movie are pretty mild to moderate, with only one sequence having really harsh strobes. But it's the fact that these are moments that take up entire scenes, and you will miss things if you're looking away. So early in the movie, there are a lot of loud booms, like earth-shaking booms that cause the lights in the background to flicker. Whenever they happen, in one scene, they happen several times in a row. And there is one sequence taking place at night during a thunderstorm with quite severe lightning, creating very bright flashes. So for flashing lights, we are giving A Quiet Place Day 1 a 5 out of 10. Not very strong strobes, but they do take up entire scenes. In terms of motion, the camera work is always handheld or almost always handheld, so that can be a little disorienting. It never shakes, so that does help. Then with mental health, this is at the very beginning of the movie, so I'm not going to call it a spoiler, but this is a hazard we've been asked to keep an eye out for, which is terminal illness. There is a main character who has a terminal illness. We're going to discover that in the opening scene. For almost the entire movie, there is a pet in peril. Now, is this movie any good? The Quiet Place franchise has been really impressive. I missed out on seeing the first one in the theaters, but I really wish I had. There's something really special about the theatrical experience with a reactive audience, something we've seen with big, loud movies like Spider-Man No Way Home and Avengers Endgame. But the A Quiet Place franchise has always been one where it's fun to experience it with a loud crowd and listen to just how quiet they're being during the quieter scenes. The first one is excellent. The second one is quite good. A Quiet Place Day One is very much its own thing outside of the first two movies, and it benefits from that. It takes this concept that we've already familiarized ourselves with and works as a really good standalone movie. One choice that I really appreciate is in the very last shot of the movie, there was potential to set up for a sequel, but as I try to imagine any sequel that could come from the ending that they could have done, every version of it is terrible. They made one choice with the ending that I think really works in making this such a good standalone movie without having to worry about setting up for the future. I definitely expected Jaimon Hunsu to be in more of this movie, especially now that he's finally getting the recognition that he deserves as an actor, but... The, sh the But the small amount of screen time that he is in, he brings it all. Lupita Nyong'o, as usual, is great. Joseph Quinn is great. It was fun to see him earlier tonight because as soon as I'm done filming this video, I'm going to be watching the season premiere of The Bear. Now, within hours of each other, I will have seen two of the Fantastic Four in brand new media. That's the Fantastic Four from next year. One point I want to make about this movie and the other two, I saw this on a Dolby screen and it was excellent. And it's not because of the loud moments. It was because of the quiet time and the tension of just the quiet sound design. A good way to tell if you have a good TV is if the color black looks really good as you see more deep varieties of black on a really high quality TV. A Quiet Place, especially A Quiet Place Day One, is a really good one for testing out the quiet levels of your really good speakers. That's an important part of the capability of a speaker. I don't feel like we talk about it enough. If you're hearing impaired, yes, you can still enjoy this movie, just like with the other two. I don't feel like this movie was made with an audience of hearing impaired people in mind. It was made with people who can hear really well in mind and the sound design that they demonstrated for the people who can hear really well 
top tier. I did have one lady sitting two seats down who had the captioning device. And I asked her at the end, were there a lot of sound effect captions? She said most of it was sound effect captions. Now, I liked almost everything about this movie. The one thing that really took me out of it and kind of ruined my suspension of disbelief was the behavior of the pet. That pet performed just a little too unrealistically that it did take me out of the immersion of the movie. But overall, this is a solid horror experience and a masterclass in how you do sound design and just a beautiful use of the big city facades they have at the studios in Hollywood. I am going to give A Quiet Place Day One an A-. minus. Thank you so much to our readers on Tumblr and Facebook, and as always, an extra special thanks to our patrons over on our Patreon page whose names are scrolling on the screen like credits right now. As a reminder, nothing produced by Movie Health Community is medical advice, nor has any of it ever been reviewed by any medical professionals. Be sure to leave a like on this video, hit that subscribe button, hit the bell icon if you want to be notified when we post new videos, and as always, stay safe at the movies. You guys want to see what's actually behind this background? Here, I'll show you. This is what's behind this background. I'm kidding, that's not my background.